this is where we left the previous tutorial when we set up a library system and in that library system we set up the different books the different authors of those books the different publishers of those books and also we set up this system between copies loans and a members table where members could take out specific copies of books all of those relationships that we see there in front of us they are all one to many and we can see that just from all of those different connectors we see a one on one side and a many symbol on the other there are other types of relationships as well. One of the more common ones is a many-to-many -many relationship, which is a little bit more complicated to create than a one-to-many relationship. So let's take this example. I've got a number of members in this library, and sometimes members, they come into the library and they borrow books, but they might be students as well, and the library has a facility where they allow members to join different study groups. So you might have a study group for maths, for example. You might have a study group for classical civilization. You might have a study group for English literature. But the thing about it is, is that a member can join a study group, but a study group can have lots of different members. But a member can join many different study groups as well. So we have to allow a study group to be associated with lots of different members, but we also have to allow lots of the, the members to be associated with many different study groups. And to allow that to happen, we can't just use this basic relationship of one-to-many anymore. It has to be more sophisticated than that. So to give ourselves a little bit of room, I'm going to move some of these tables further up here. And I'm going to create a new table and eventually I'll slot it in here and the new table is uh, study groups so create table I'm going to say that the ID of this table is study group underscore ID and I'm just going to make it as a very simple table the only other field I'm going to have on it is just the study group name and let's put in some examples here straight away uh, the three that I mentioned before was maths and we had one called English literature and we also had classics okay so I've got three different study groups there all denoted by the three different study group IDs one two and three that's fine now let's save that, give it the name study groups, click OK, and let's add that table into my relationships. I'm just going to close down all of my different tables here to make sure that there's no, no tables open when I want to actually create relationships. So right click, show table, click that table I'm just after creating there, study groups. And I'm really just focusing on study groups and members here, so I'm going to drag members down here as well. Uh, now, what I really want to do is I want to create, again, I want to allow study groups to have lots of different members, and I want to allow a member to join lots of different study groups. There is no way that I can actually join them through a normal one-to-many relationship. So to create a many-to-many -many relationship, I have to create a separate table specifically to do with a many-to-many -many relationship, and these types of tables are called junction tables. And junction tables are really easy to spot they are usually a table with just two or three fields and they're full of numbers because essentially two of the fields have to be foreign keys. So rather than explain it verbally, I'm just going to go through with it and it'll be all become a lot clearer when I actually put it into this relationships view and relate things up. So I'm going to create a new table, just like I would any other, just because it's a junction table doesn't mean I create it in any other different way. Uh, the table that I'm going to call, the, the name I'm going to call this junction table, again, I'm using a very specific type of um, naming convention, and that can be explained later on. But because it's between study groups and members, I'm just going to call it study group um, underscore member underscore ID. And the two other fields I'm going to have in this table are the two foreign keys. So one will be a foreign key. Did I actually click on text there? I think I did, which is wrong. Just to make sure 
I should really have clicked on number because it's going to be a foreign key. Uh, so this foreign key will be related to members FK. And the other foreign key will be into study group underscore FK. That members foreign key, I should really have named that in a singular because we're talking about one members primary key number that will go in there. Okay, so that looks good. And again, the uh, name of the table is using the naming convention junction underscore study group uh, underscore members. Uh, so it's a bit long-winded, but it's very it's very clear what it means. Click OK. Right. I'm going to click off that. Add in the table I'm just after creating. Very easy to spot because it's got such a long name. But in, in the relationships view, that can be hidden a little bit. And so I've got two foreign keys here. The primary key, study group underscore members underscore ID, really is just to give each separate row uh, uh, a unique ID. I don't absolutely have to have it in a junction table. I could actually set up what's called a duplicate primary key just on these two foreign keys, but that's another uh, tutorial uh, for me to explain on another day. So let's keep it simple. Let's just keep a primary key in there for the moment, and we've just got two different foreign keys. So the study group underscore ID primary key from the study groups table, that's going to go into this foreign key here. Enforce referential integrity and create, that's fine. And the members ID primary key is going to relate into this foreign key field here, enforce referential integrity, create, and that works really well as well. Now, how does this many to many relationship work? Well, I think let's again take a look at the different members we have. We only have one. Um, let's put in another member in here because we need to have. Um, We need to have more than one member to have a many-to-many -many relationship. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1990. And uh, that's jane at doe.ie. Okay, so that's my new member. Uh, the study groups, I should have three study groups if I remember. Let's just check them. Yes, maths is one, English literature is two, classics is three. Right, so back in my junction, if I wanted Joe Blogs, who has got a member ID of one, and I wanted Joe Blogs to be associated with the Maths study group, which is one, and the Classic study group, which is three. Well, that's what I'm going to put in here. I'm going to say Joe Blogs is in the Maths study group, which is one. He is also related to the Classic study group, which is three. So he gets two different records. Each of the different records says the relationship between one member and one study group. So that's fine. Let's talk about Jane Doe then. Jane Doe has got an ID of two and she wants to join the study groups English Literature and Classics with the study group IDs of two and three. So back in the junction table I'm going to say Jane Doe is an ID of two. She wants to join English Literature which is an ID of two and Jane Doe also wants to join Classics which is three. So if I look at that, I've got two, lots of different study groups. Some of those study groups, for instance, number three, which is classics, is associated with more than one num uh, member. And also, from the member side, I've got members who are associated with more than one study group. So that junction table lets that relationship happen. That's what the junction table is for. And any queries that I do would take that into account. So that's what the junction table is, and that's how it works. So I've got a nice many-to-many -many relationship there. If I was to take a guess at how common each of those different types of relationships are, I'd say really roughly maybe about 70% of the relationships I see in databases are one-to-many. About another 20 or 25% are many-to-many. And then the last type of relationship is a one-to-one, -one, which is something that we haven't dealt with, but we'll deal with in a, in a different tutorial. But many-to-many uh, -many relationships, they are reasonably common, common enough that you need to know about them. And they always use a junction table. 
and the way to spot a junction table if you're looking at a database for the first time is they're usually a table full of numbers and they usually only have two or three different fields. So that's it until the next tutorial.